Okay, now we should be recording. So yeah, first of all, welcome everyone to the, the, the Wish Wish online meeting. Um, so the idea here was to continue our, our discussion on the uh, DDDL SDF interwork that we have started already uh, in, in, in the previous Wish calls. And here we've been looking at the uh, Azure Digital Twins definition language uh, ecosystem and how that could be working together with the uh, SDF tools uh, for cross ecosystem in interoperability. And um, we had already a few meetings ar around here and would discuss, for example, last time how the units uh, could, could be aligned. I think we made some, some good progress there. And after that, we have been uh, playing, playing with the SDF models and DTDL models and, and conversions between those. We're thinking about Share, sharing some of the experiences uh, about the tools um, and, and the different success on, on the conversion experiences uh, we have had in, in our work. And also would be, of course, good to get uh, an update from the, on the DTDL side, anything uh, that has relevant that has happened since the last time uh, since, since you presented DTDL. Um, but then I think the bulk of the time um, and a half of perhaps the meeting was planned that we could discuss on this way forward uh, with the interwork, discussing some of the things that we have we have discovered here and, and see how we could actually improve uh, cross ecosystem here, cross ecosystem interoperability here. So that's uh, roughly the plan for today. Um, any questions or comments on the agenda? Okay, uh, here in none, um, I, I see we're, we're still missing a, a few persons who I'm expecting to join, um, <clears throat> but maybe we can brief them uh, after, the, after the session on, on what they potentially missed. So, uh, Brian, um, can, can you perhaps start on, I mean, anything <clears throat> that has happened uh, in, in the DDDL ecosystem uh, since the last time we discussed? Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't have, we don't have any major um, things to talk about with DTDL um, this, this time, but um, there are a few things I can mention here. Uh, one is that um, I think last time we talked about the, um, the uh, IoT plug and play device models repository, which is basically a GitHub repository where we collect together um, DTDL device models for, uh, you know, devices that are um, available, you know, in production devices that you can then use with our services. And so that's been, I just wanted to mention that has been continuing to grow. And so that's a good source for, um, you know, looking at examples of DTDL device models that are um, real world ones there. So, and I can provide the link to that again in the notes uh, if we don't have that from last time. So that's that's been one thing that's continued to grow there. And you can see just more and more models showing up there. And then the other part of DTDL that um, that I think we talked about last time as well is the uh, set of, of ontologies that we have. So we've got one for smart buildings based on real estate core. We've got an energy grid, one for energy grid, which is based on a standard that I don't remember off the top of my head. And then we've got a smart cities one as well. And so those are other place, good places to look at um, how we're doing DTDL modeling for um, digital twins in that case. Uh, less about devices for those ontologies and more about um, modeling the other parts of um, digital twins. So, you know, things like buildings and cities and those kinds of things. So I think that's my update, unless there are questions, of course, we could uh, talk about anything else. Okay, very good, Th thanks, Brian. Any, any immediate questions from, from anyone? Maybe a, a quick comment. We actually, I did look at some of the models that the uh, links that you, you you shared last time uh, and did some conversions uh, from those models uh, into SDF, and we can have a, a closer look at those that those results uh, in in the next part. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, good. So maybe then we we jump straight to the uh, conversion tools and, and experiences part. Um, let me, uh, so actually, Petri, can, can you share the 
slides or did you get it working or should I? Oh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know where I have it actually at the moment. If it gets tricky, I can also share it from here. I just need to switch between taking notes and showing the. Let's see. If it works now, then it's nice. Uh, does yes. it share the whole window or or, or the screen? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's better. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I I can maybe walk through the first um few slides on, on, on this experience. So maybe let's review switch to the uh, second slide. So one question that we had um, when we were doing these conversions was around the complex schemas. Um, so what, what we no noticed that in the in DTDL, um, so the telemetry type, you can do complex things like you put an array there, an object, uh, and describe all the details. But when it comes to the properties, you only have a simple value like string or an integer. Um, so first of all, wondering like what, what is the background um, on, on this um, design decision? And then got a follow up question like if there would be more um, complex things, um, how do you envision that those are modeled by their separate properties? Or if there's something else that, that you have in mind, how you would um, model something more complex than just a, a simple value? Yeah, actually in DTDL, properties can be complex types. The only type that's not supported right now is arrays in properties. Um, so, and, and that's something that we want to correct in, in time. We just haven't been able to get that that far yet, but you can do objects. Um, and there is some uh, depth limit to objects, I think, but um, you can do objects, you can do uh, enums, and, uh, you know, of course, the simple types like you, like you. Um, so, so I'm not sure if you ran into something in particular yeah. with complex types and properties. Well, maybe it was then I simply misunderstood what I read from the spec. <laughs> that could have been well the well the issue there. Let me actually have a look at the exact part of the spec that I was looking at. Um... Yeah, it's possible we have a bug or or something not clear uh, yeah. in the spec. In the, yeah, because. Uh, it, it says in spec that it may not be an array nor any complex schema uh, that contains array. Uh, okay, so it's really the array uh, is the key thing. Okay, I, yes, I, I misread yes. that. Yeah. Yeah, we just wanted to be clear. <laughs> we were trying to be clear, like you can't do an array, but you also can't have an object that has a field that's an array in it as well. Um, so <laughs> arrays anywhere sort of in the in the type are not allowed in properties currently. Mm. Okay. Okay, so th that explains, and, and, and you're planning to get, get rid of that um, um, limitation. Yeah, we're working on that. That, that th There's really no design reason for that. It was just, uh, you know, the ability to, to properly support that in our backing services. Okay. So, uh, pardon me, I joined late. I, I'm showing his OCF staff, but it's uh, Michael Coster here. I had a question about the, in, in terms of a complex property, do you, um, when you define a complex uh, item like an object, are each of those individual elements also um, semantically defined in your language? So, in other words, if I have an RGB color, can I go then and look at red and green and blue as separate components, and you have something that describes what what those the meaning of those components is, et cetera? And like same for enums. If I have a set of enums, can you? Can you point, like, I, I guess DTDL is RDF based, so you theoretically should be able to do this. I guess what I'm asking is, is this a pattern you use in your uh, definitions? Yeah, it, actually, it's a really great, great question. So we think about properties in two ways. Um, one is that um, we've made it through, our, through the, so you've got the modeling side of things, and then you've got the sort of the instance um, side of things. On the instance side, we set it up so that when you're working with properties, you can work with the whole value. Like you could set your, you know, in your, in your RGB color example, you could, you know, get or set the whole value with the with the three the three values inside. Um, but we do at the modeling level, 
let you you do model each of those separately. So you model, you know, the R and the G and the B separately. Um, and the intention is also to allow you to attach semantic meaning, you know, semantic types and other things to those individual fields within that complex type. Uh, I think you'll see in DTDL, the current DTDL, it, you can't do that um, at the at the field level in objects today. It is something that we're also looking at because um, we do want to allow you to be able to do that. Yeah, likewise, enums. When you have an enum and you have a set of mm -hmm. uh, potential values, it would be nice if each of those could sort of be a, a, a node in the graph as well, and then you can have you can expand those out. Sometimes I, when describing things like, oh, I want to think about in ASHRAE two two to three p, they have a thing called unit quantity kind, which is sort of like an enum, but then each of those is actually a a unit quantity, um, you know, structure. So, so you know, here's a selection, and then the, it's sort of like maps to tables, but <laughs> but it's a way to semantically model this. Yeah, yeah, and in the in the sort of underlying modeling graph, though they are separate nodes, like you said, we have just at the DTDL language level, um, we we have we've we've purposely kind of kept it limited in what you can do, both to help you know so, sort of focus focus model authors on, um, you know, being able to just focus on the certain things that uh, to get started. And, um, it, uh, but we do expect to be able to extend that. And that's what we've been working on some of that stuff as well. We're just not ready to talk about those details yet, but um, that is certainly one thing that we're looking at. Okay, good. Well, then that, that, that clarifies. And I also am looking forward to see your, your, your design on that because we've been kind of talking about the similar topic uh, when it comes to the STF design. In okay. STF, you can, do comp you can do complex types, but as you said, it's very useful to be able to attach semantics on those parts and kind of what are the right tools and modeling techniques for that that then would be you know, suitable with, with the different ecosystems such as DTDL. I think that would be very, very interesting to have, have it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Um, yep, it, it's something. Yeah, I'll have to figure out when we can talk about it. Uh, we just can't do it in this meeting today from our side. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess the and I mean also when when it comes to SDF, I mean we're not not planning to get the first version of of SDF um, published as as an, as an RFC, uh, but then probably do, doing these kind of details then would perhaps be an, an extension towards. STF. Um, so maybe the key thing would be for us on the, on the STF side to have the right kind of uh, extension models um, that support this. So um, I was wondering, like, um, a bit, whenever you have a chance to, to talk more about this, would be interesting to hear more to see, make sure that we have the right kind of extensions in place that we can add uh, the right kind of features also also later on. Um, so yeah, I guess the key thing is uh, let, let us know when you're ready to talk about more and would be very interesting to hear about it. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. And I actually like what you're saying about extensions in SDF. I've been sort of on the side looking at how could we, um, you know, enable extensions in DTDL so that we could actually use other um, ontologies or, you know, other um, RDF definitions, like things like QDT and things like that. Um, we don't have anything formal there yet, but it's it's an area that I think was was I uh, got interested in from our from the last meeting I was in I think back in July. So I think mm -hmm. I think it's great if we you know if we can if we can sort of think about that on both sides right um so we can share stuff. Exactly. Yep. So sounds like a very very good thing. Okay, but I guess then the, the com complex schema uh, issue is, is more clear. Um, <clears throat> Can also take the one on the following slide before we go to the more implementation work that Petri has encountered. So, you can switch to the next one, Petri. Thanks. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so this is the one that we already slightly tackled on on, on last time. The na namespace for for units, and I guess where we pretty much have concluded we'll be using the those units that are not suitable for the cinema registry. Uh, it's a separate URIs. Um, we didn't quite conclude yet last time if there was an um, appropriate DTDL unit na namespace. And um, you mentioned last time that you, there was a few different sources where you had pulled uh, the units you use in DTDL. 
but then you had added some on your own. And I guess Slug was um, one of those that that you had added. Um, then the, the quest question would be like like if you if we would use this kind of a URI model um, for those units, for example, specific to DDDL, um, what would be that appropriate uh, URI to use in, in a similar way that you would refer to uh, external ontologies, um, external ontologies uh, in, in other other parts of your your models. So, just wondering, did you have a chance to think about that? Um, how, how you how you would envision the best way to model that? So, just to make sure I understand, do you mean how to use like the the namespace and URIs for DTDL units, or how to bring in other units into DTDL? Yeah, it's, it's more like if we would use um, if you would use the unit uh, DTDL DTDL specific units in STF models, we would do put a, mm. put a URI there. But I, I guess you would do a similar thing um, in in DTDL, like if you refer to I don't know QUDT units. Um, yep. But if there are units that are DTDL specific, um, what would that URI be like? Are you planning to I don't know publish the DTDL specific units as, as a formal ontology somewhere uh, that we could then refer to? Or is it should be just, I don't know, use the DTDL spec URL and you know put there. Uh, you use that as, as as the namespace, or do you have a, 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 a let's say a some stable namespace that you are using for DTDL terms? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we do we do have a um a namespace for the units, and I'd have to I'd have to go look up to find exactly what it is. Um, you can actually see it, I think, because we we do publish our context files for um, DTDL. Those are out in our repository, so I can go look there. We can grab it from there and put it in the notes. Um, and so, so we do have full URIs for those. So I I guess you know if you were to refer to those from um, say SDF or wherever, you would I would expect you to just use those URIs. And um, yeah, and likewise. Uh, you know, when I was looking into, you know, ideas around uh, allowing reference to other to other definitions like QUDT, for example, um, I would expect to use those those URIs in DTDL. Okay, great. Okay, so I guess that, that's what we, we could then take as a, as a working assumption here um, when, when we convert the, the units that we don't have uh, currently other source for. Okay, great. Um, then, yeah, um, Petri, do you want to then take the implementation specific questions? Yeah, there, are, there were, there are some questions and some maybe own implementation problems during the, during the work, but there was a, uh, like uh, what we are using SDF, the uh, relationship uh, type, and uh, there was at least no direct information in DTDL uh, what kind of what kind of a relationship exists, and uh, I don't know if there is any specification about that, but uh, at least on those examples that I was uh, looking at, there was nothing about that. Uh, and when you, the second, yeah, so I was just going to ask a clarifying question when you say what kind, what, what do you mean by the kind of relationship? Uh, I think it's in Saref ontology, for example, you can say that it's, they are like, uh, beside each other next to or what, what was the term actually there, mm. that kind of relationship or contained in. Got it. Yeah, sorry, would you want me, uh, did you have more you wanted to say on that one? Or do you want me to? Uh, no, not not on that one. Uh, but that, that's, let's say that I have been doing one implementation round and on that. So I haven't had time to go into more details or looking at any specifications or anything. So I will continue with that anyway. Yeah, and I can just comment on that as well. You, you, you're right. We don't have a way to say um, to to say uh, in some you know machine readable way what the kind of relationship is currently. Um, the best we have right now is we have the name field in a relationship where you can you know set the name, but of course that's just 
you know, the, a, a, a human or a model author can can read that and understand probably what the name means, but it's not a it's not really machine readable. Um, it is something that we would like to do, and our thought there has been to do those as um, semantic types in the future, allow you to essentially add more types to the relationship um, type, so that you could actually use that for for specifying the kind. But that support doesn't exist right now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the other thing that I, I hit there was these uh, copyright and license parts that are missing. So uh, I understand that you have somewhere uh, generic copyright or license information, so that can be basically copied to SDF to, to those fields. But on the other hand, when you are doing SDF to DTDL, we actually lose that information completely. Then we can't store it anywhere. Yeah, you're right, and our, our, we've kind of gone back and forth on this internally on this, and um, you know, we talked about should these be should this information be at each model level, or should this be wrapped up inside of some kind of um, grouping concept, like an ontology concept or something like that. Um, and and so in those debates, we haven't we haven't landed exactly where we want this to be yet. Yeah. Okay, but that, that's not a not a big issue to add later, at least on the implementation level. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't think that I did. I have any other questions at this point. I I was running some tests with this um, set of uh, models that that I got, and uh, there was three. I guess there was an energy grid and two others. And I was using the energy grid as the example uh, set. And then I noticed <laughs> at the last minute that, okay, there was like spaces in the names in the other two. And <laughs> that actually confused my script quite totally. So <laughs> the ener energy grid at least seems to work. And I have to fix my name issue there on the other. Great, that sounds great. But I basically I can show I can quickly run what, what it does. It doesn't it doesn't show any fancy things. It's only command line tool what I'm running at the moment. But um just wondering if this sharing follows. Can you see the screen at the moment and uh, no it's an empty screen okay so it doesn't work that nicely let's see what it says any help i should uh, there should be two yeah. yeah it's a bit small but um it's you can zoom zoom in the font a bit then it will be good Any better? Thanks. Yep. So basically, we I just give the we have the conversion tool with where I give the ontology directory and the output directory and run it so it will make automatic conversion for each of the each of the models. And uh, as we can see here, we have the corresponding uh, directories. And check what what's there. So it's now named with SDF object, and then the original name plus SDF JSON. Uh, let's take one of those. If you can see, hopefully it's not too small. You can try to put it bigger, but it starts to confuse my screen. So basically, it converts it to SDF with the DTDL ACDC terminal as the title. Then we have the rest of the header fields still empty. Then we have it collects uh, or gets the actual uh, namespace DTMI digital twins NGSILD. And then we have also the uh, terms namespace that should give us, give the 
type of the actual uh, relationship. And at the end end of the file, you can see the SDF relation where uh, the operational limit set is one relation and type is currently to be defined. Target is the object's namespace with the operational limit set as the specific item and then the description field. So it's a quite uh, straightforward conversion at the moment. Uh, I haven't yet gone into looking at every every uh, file there. So if there's some uh, more complex things to come, so but I have to I have to go there into in during this week still so to check that how they work actually. But this was quite a uh, simple run at the moment. So. Yeah, no, this, this looks really great. Um, I'm curious on the DTDL side um, for, for reading and parsing the DTDL, did you use our DTDL parser or did you just use a standard JSON LD processor? Or what, what was your approach? Yeah, I took it uh, from the JSON directly. I just read the, your file and did you do it as JSON LD or just as JSON? Just as JSON. Yeah, there may uh, be some that th that may be interesting at some point because I know that there are <laughs> that sometimes the JSON varies. Um, you know, because JSON LD allows different forms. You know, you can you can have absolute URIs or you can have relative URIs in the file. And I know that some of these files will have uh, sometimes mixed things because some of them were generated. Um, so that 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 can be interesting if you're just doing JSON processing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was actually checking. I have a small demo web web page where I can convert from other models to SDF and then from SDF to other other models. But at least Web of Things um, thing model didn't work always, so it mm. crashed at some point. So I don't know yet where where the actual problem is with this, but but we'll see. I have discussed with the Web of Things uh, implementer, and the Jan Roman, so his response at least quickly if there's some problems with that code. So, but it's really interesting. It Sometimes it looks that it works pretty well. Yeah, that, that's Unfo great. unfortunately that's I couldn't could, couldn't demo it at the moment because it <laughs> did, didn't work when I started. But that's that's on my side. The, problem. Okay, thanks. I don't have anything more to show here, but. You mentioned that JSON LD and, and processing. I'm, I'm wondering in DTDL, do you use any uh, RDF constraint tools? Like, uh, do you, do you have RDFS? Do you use Shackle? Um, what? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe I should, maybe I could determine this just by looking into things, but, um, you know, that is sort of related to the thing we just discussed. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, we, we do. You actually wouldn't be able to tell by looking at things because we haven't published that level of our model, meta model yet. Um, that's something that we're working and pulling together, but um, we, we do use, so uh, we started, we actually started out using Shackle and, um, what we found was in our, in some of our scenarios, um, because of the runtime performance requirements, the perf we did, it did not meet our performance needs. And so what we've done is we've actually taken a, a combination of shackle specifications, and then we've, we've added some of our own um, sort of extensions, if you will, to that. Um, and we've actually, what, what we do in our parser is we've, we pre-built the shackle constraint so that we don't have to actually run the full shackle processor at runtime we've got a, a more optimized form of that and then that's our constraint checker that we uh, so you on. use the shackle framework you've added some um some relate some new relation types to shackle maybe to to you know that in terms of what you just described as an extension and then yep. you sort of cache the processing but you're still sort of using a, a shackle sort of constraint framework on the on the language. It'll be interesting to see how, you know, when you when you get around to publishing that, how what that looks like. Because that that seems a common 
um, approach now. I know they're using that in, in ASHRAE now, like Joe Bender's using all that stuff. Um, Shackle, they use RDFS for some constraints also, and they have two or three OWL keywords in there just, just for good measure. But, um, <laughs> right. you know, I, I'm assuming that you, you would, you're sort of maybe a little more strict than that and maybe a little more internal, but, but it's good news that you're sort of based on a, sh a Shackle type architecture. Yeah, we, we actually really liked Shackle. Um, it was just the performance and really in particular around the Sparkle part. So he had ri originally written some of our constraints couldn't be expressed, you know, directly with Shackle, uh, you know, with the, with the built in Shackle constraints, um, but they've got the, the Sparkle um, mechanism for expressing really kind of anything. And so we had used that um, pretty heavily in our first iteration. And that just didn't, it just didn't meet our performance needs. So we had to so we, we took some of those those things we had expressed with Sparkle and said, hey, let's just, you know, define these uh, sort of as extensions, if you will, and and then do this sort of pre pre built constraint checker. Based on those, but yeah, but yeah, uh, I think, you know, hopefully we can get get our meta model to be public. Um, not not too long and I think when you see it, it won't look unfamiliar. There's there's a bunch of shackle stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so that, that totally makes sense. Thank you. Okay, very good. And maybe I, one quick comment I could make here on the convert model. So that we are using here an extension that is not part of the STF spec yet. So the STF relation, uh, that's something that we are still uh, experimenting with. And um, but since given it was used by that kind of mechanism was used by DTDL models already. We're using it here on the on the conversion, so that is well, it's a good chance it, it will change how it exactly looks, it looks like in detail. But at least this way seems to be fitting quite well. The DTDL models, the transformations are quite straightforward. Yeah, this is our main RD. This is our main RDF hook beyond the sort of what you might consider to be a fixed ontology of things and objects and properties, events, actions, et cetera. Um, this is our sort of RDF hook to sort of go to the broader, you know, sort of directly, since we're not really JSON LD and you can't just plug in sort of at type and stuff, this is how we're, we're planning on doing it. So it's it's meant to look like an, an I think like an RDF link more or less, but um, also a sort of general purpose so we could do a lot of stuff with it. Okay, great. Th thanks, Petri. And um, maybe one question about these transformed uh, models. So we were thinking it might be useful that people can see these uh, DDL models uh, translated in into SDF. I'm just wondering before we <laughs> dump them somewhere, for example, in a, in a GitHub, uh, do you, Brian, know if there's any uh, concerns on that? I mean, uh, if I remember the license was MIT, so that seems to be Quite, quite relaxed on, on the on the legal side, but is there any any other things to consider for before we uh, would publish these SDF versions of the DTDL models? Um, I I guess I don't have any particular concerns, but you, you know, let me circle around. We've got a, a team that works with our ontologies in more detail. Um, let, let me just I, like you're saying, the license doesn't. May, may not say anything there. I, I can circle around with them um, just to see if there's anything that, you know, they'd, they'd be, that they would have to say, or, or maybe even that we'd want to, you know, set up cross links or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, just let, let, let us know when you, when you hear from them. Okay, yeah, I'll take that action item. Excellent. So Thanks. what is that? Um, <laughs> sorry. I don't stop me if I'm interfering with the agenda, but what's the um, scope of what we're going to publish on SDF in terms of like definitions from DTDL? Is it the, is it the basic sort of uh, uh, system ontology stuff or does it include the application stuff like the smart city and, and power grid and all of that also? How broad is that what we're, what we're planning on or what we're discussing uh, converting and publishing? Well, now basically what I had in mind is just a, a few examples on how things look like, or, or maybe you know a one set that we can see for any, anyone who wants to um, for for the purpose of um, working on converters. That's kind of the next first step I had in mind. 
Right. And then, so of course, the scope uh, could be anything that you have access to, you could convert, right? Yeah, yeah, that is kind of as, as, as the first, but then, of course, on, on, on the longer term, now I'm thinking about the, the 1DM uh, side of things, of course, it would, would be very, very interesting to have it. where we 1DM, you know, the idea is, is to, to collect these models and then look at how we can, you know, learn from the best, best of the models. Um, so for that purpose, of course, it would be great to have, you know, as, as good set of models as possible on, on, on in, in SDF. Um, so. Basically, I guess those those two steps, but the second one, of course, that's more maybe one DM um, discussion to have. Oh, yeah, of course, right. Thanks. Yeah, but, but of course, I mean, like, um, if, if you think, Brian, like the, the, the DDL folks don't have anything against that, I think it would be very good that, you know, uh, the bigger bigger set of models we have are modeled in, in the same language, the, the bigger, better chances we have on things to make things operate. Uh, across the ecosystems, so I think it would be very beneficial for for all of us. Yeah, we've been yeah, looking, that makes sense. We've been sorry, there, sort of. Well, so, sorry. <laughs> but really, the the impetus behind it is we've been looking at sort of what we have in SDF and or sorry in one DM and said, so, well, this is mostly just uh, you know for device affordances, like how do I control devices? But really, you know, there's a, a whole broader set of concepts and things like that that could also be represented in the same model. This is the stuff we have here, which is very close to devices, but not not just what is already being published as a, you know, a Zigbee cluster library type spec or something like that, where you just have the, you know, here's my, it's like more like an IO spec, but this gets us more into actually being able to model more of systems. And I think that's, that's kind of the people using, um, People using SDF will be able to have access to that. And I think the interesting thing about like DTDL is how do we, if a person is using these, these 1DM models, how do, what's the mechanism that they understand that this is a DTDL model that they, that, you know, they go back to and, um, and, you know, plug into the whole Azure stack and everything like that, which is really sort of what you'd want to maintain that linkage to. And how do we do that? Is there any kind of, I, mean, I guess that's sort of what we have in terms of copyrights and stuff, but, you know, linking back in terms of being able to say SDF relation, this thing um, lines up with the thing that's in this other namespace is another really what I was thinking about though. Like when I'm processing the model, I get to find out, I can link straight back to a DTDL namespace and, and find out more about this thing. So like SDF might be an entry point, but we don't want it to just stop there. We want it to to fully link back to the where where the things came from. And in, in this case, I think there might be some times when we just sort of purify a a, um, a description, you know, a definition of something, and and say here's this is just sort of a one DM definition. But we still want the provenance of that. So that's maybe not exactly like a directly converted thing, but it might be, have elements of it. And so we want to be able to indicate that as well. Indeed, and I mean, at least how I've been thinking about this in my, my head is that like when you see a, of course, the DDL models, they would have the, the DDL namespace uh, in them, which should be then a sufficient indication on that, where, where this comes from. And you then uh, expect that those models would be just as such convert to DDL uh, on, on, on any Azure system. But then, of course, where, when it gets more, more interesting is that you have, for example, an, an Ipsum model. Um, or, 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 or if some models together with DTDL models and you build your thing to, out of them and then be able to link across them and converting, you know, your IPSO definition via SDF into DTDL and bringing, for example, to the Azure Digital Twin Explorer and, and building your, your system on top of that. Um, that's roughly what I have the model in my, my head, at least, and I haven't, we haven't <laughs> experimented with that too much yet. Really, we're looking at kind of two two main ways of using SDF. One is like what what I would say is earlier, like purified models that sort of like they're like a one DM thing would say, here's a one size fits all model for some general concept that everybody uses, and it contains elements of sort of the best best elements of other models. But another way to do it is just sort of converted. So 
I have a common entry point for a bunch of different backend languages and systems like, you know, DTDL and LPC UA and, you know, backend and Modbus and um, that also. And as, a, as an entry point, I can think about composing systems, I can browse, I can whatever, and then, you know, just link back. My, in my intention is ultimately to maybe build a web service layer on top of these things. And so I want a common um, entry point for all of them. And I think that's that's sort of the second one. So I'm 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 using it not to create a common definition that everyone can use to build their thing, but rather to create a common language for definitions so that I can easily build adaptation layers uh, based on gateways and translators and things like that. Indeed, and, and maybe that's a, a, a nice segue to the um, one of the discussion items um, that uh, how you actually connect these models to protocols and, and serializations. Um, so when, when we had our, 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 our offline chat with, with Brian on, on this meeting, that was one of the topics that we actually identified there. So maybe we could have that discussion now. Um, Petri, can, can you switch back to the last slide of the of the deck we prepared sure so because we discussed in in the email brian i mean what was the um the, the question there like if, if i now have these dtdl models that i have converted from sdf uh, ecosystem, uh, sorry, different ecosystems via SDF in, into DDDL. And how would I, what would be my next steps if I would, for example, work on, on, on the Azure um, yeah, uh, systems, uh, like, like the Digital Twin Explorer, where I, uh, we, we tested some of the, some of the converted models already. And, and there were, the next steps would be, of course, then how you connect to the actual uh, physical devices that where these, um, what these models are, are describing. So, just give you a, a quick idea uh, what what's kind of our, our vision on on the SDF side. And it will be very interesting to hear like how you actually do these things on on the DDDL side. So on on, on SDF side, of course, because the SDF really describes that the information um, model uh, level of things, and then when you have to actually go to the actual serializations, you need a set set of um, ecosystem specific information. And we've been planning on, on defining this mapping information um, that would have two kinds of information, at least the ecosystem specific information. So for example, um, in IPSO ecosystem, each model has a numeric ID um, because this is rather IPSO, IPSO ecosystem specific thing. You wouldn't necessarily see those in the generic SDF models, but you would add those to the, in, in a refinement set. And then there's the other set of um, specific information, not, not so much on the ecosystem, but actually on that specific instance. For example, what is the IP address of that device? You know, what kind of security credentials uh, it is using? And uh, when we've been experimenting with this, often we've been using Web of, web of Things thing descriptions for adding those details. So there you can put, for example, protocol and security details. Uh, so you can convert your SDF uh, model into thing description and add those details, give it to a stack and they can actually communicate. And that's how we've been uh, doing it so far on, on the SDF side. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting here, here like how, how, do, how does it work uh, on, on the DDDL uh, side as of today? Yeah, this is a, this is a good area for discussion and, and I think, you know, improvement on our side. Um, so we have, you know, this identify, of course, the similar, you know, problem that needs to be solved where you need to be able to map from, uh, you know, these device instances or digital twin instances. Um, and that you don't want to carry that information in the generic model. And so we, we've on our side called those bindings, but mapping is the same, similar, similar thing. Um, what we've done today is. We've essentially said there's there's a single binding using our word, a single mapping, um, and it's it's built in. And so this is what we end up documenting in our you know in our documentation about how to, you know, uh, write a write the device code that's going to interact with um, with our Azure services that's described with the DTDL model, and then likewise we have a similar thing on the service 
the, on the service side for the services that consume those um, the instances that are represented in the cloud. And so the um, we don't have a formal definition of this. Uh, it, it's something that we've internally talked about, like, hey, it'd be nice maybe to think about being able to uh, enable something like this mapping to be described so that um, you know we aren't we aren't just saying there's just one way to do this but it's something that we haven't gotten to yet so a couple of things i mean you could you could immediately employ something like open api or better yet thing description to just mm -hmm. describe what you have your the profile i would call what you've defined as a profile and it's sort of like it's you there could be other you know profile but yeah it's a protocol binding is what they call it in, in one of those things um, but yeah, then, you know, down the road, a more general thing that says, well, here's how we map our thing, our schemas to other protocols. I'm assuming BACnet and Modbus and, and Lawnworks are going to be sort of like for, for a lot of the people using digital twins and buildings. And then for cities, there's, you know, so there's going to be probably a, a good half a dozen or a dozen even different, different things you're going to want to map to, like somebody's LoRa kind of, you know, uh, uh, LP WAN protocol endpoints and things like that. So um, it would be it would be interesting to go through an exercise where you could, you know, even so thing descriptions are just instances. You would just crank them out when you when you make things. And and what we're talking about is more like how you map them to. But it would just be interesting to see what some of these look like if you had had a way of describing them in Swagger or or thing description. Yeah, that's a good. I haven't taken a look at that um, to see what that might look like in, you know, thing description or or, or anything there. Um, I guess the one thing we have done, w one thing we've done, and this is more on this. So uh, we we actually have sort of two different ways of looking at these. So we have the the device, what I call the device facing um, binding, I guess, where you know, the device will will be implemented, you know, using some protocol, let's say, so like MQTT, for example, or even like you're saying, BACnet or Modbus or whatever. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it'll be communicating outward and we'll want to be able to map that into, you know, into the model elements. And then on the service side, um, typically what we see there is a lot of services, you know, using, you know, being REST based or using HTTP or whatever. And so we've got um, actually a mapping there that is described with Swagger. So I, uh, yeah, actually we've published the Swagger on that. So I could, um, you know, we, we've got a Swagger that defines that side of the service facing side. Of oh, that's cool. Well, thing description is really just has all the same elements of Swagger, but it puts a semantic description up front and then it has data schemas and the protocol binding that has essentially the same, um, things that would map. In other words, you could really map them back and forth if you had both as a sort of some some RDF that pointed to things in the swagger file. Well the mm -hmm. thing that thing description allows you to do is put at, at type annotation right in the file. So some of my examples were complex schemas that had annotations of which sub property using at type that pointed back to um, SDF models that, that said, here's the red, here's the green, here's the blue. Mm. That way you could describe a payload that had different organizations of red, green, and blue. And if you wanted to, you could even adapt to different, you know, um, quantization styles of the different components and things like that to, you know, a law compression or whatever you want to do. Right. So um, really that's, that's sort of, I'd, I'd encourage you to look at thing description because it has some features that would be useful in both those directions for you. And there's already the BACnet and well, BACnet bindings are not that hard It's the URI basically, but you know, there's already BACnet and Modbus bindings and, and there's already some examples of how services are being exposed upward using thing description because it still has the, the sort of, no, I don't know your interaction style. There's like this idea of actions and events and, and things you might or might not use. They, they're useful in other systems like OPC UA where they have concepts that align with those. But mm -hmm. even if you're just using it for an object property model, it still um, has all those protocol bindings and you can say, I'm using HTTP. Alternatively, here's an MQTT endpoint that you can go to. You can pretty much do all that in thing description. And so I, 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 I guess I'd recommend like looking at that. That would be a, 
a possible common interaction point and also you know the um eventually going to be a well it, it's already a an actual w3c recommendation but it's still on a you know 1.0 to 2.0 kind of um, 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 development stage right now uh yeah no that sounds like a good recommendation i you know i I've, I've looked at thing description um but i haven't dug into that level i guess so yeah that's something that um that i could could take well, somebody through. somebody somebody you know i mean not, not to get too far off sdf but somebody could help help you make some examples of that too somebody yeah. on all or one or more of us <laughs> okay no that sounds great Yeah, indeed, and actually, one, one, one simple way to make examples would be to use the DDDL to SDF to TD conversion. And you could at least see easily how, how things look on, on both sides. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. Just, yeah, run it through the tools and see what comes out. And mm -hmm. then you know, see how much streaking is needed or whatever. So how, how far are we away from our original challenge that at least some of us had in mind that we want to get an IPSO item, describe that with a, a SDF description and somehow connect that to Asia using all of our converters that we have available. How far are we away from that? That, that's a that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I think what we we have now, like like for example, the set of DDDL models. I I know I can at least <laughs> give them to Azure tools, and they they show up there. <laughs> so that that far we are uh, definitely. But I haven't we haven't yet tried to actually do anything uh, with them. So maybe Brian, do do you have some? Uh, and an idea like what's what's the amount of work if you have something described in a in a DDDL, and um, it's part of that system. And I would now actually want to connect the uh, actual device there. How how far am I? And you, and you mean connected to Azure to um, yeah for, to our for, IoT for services? For example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. So then what it comes down to is, um, and, you know, I can offline find the, the guides for this, but um, so Azure, so the way you connect devices into the Azure services for IoT is through the service called IoT Hub. And it supports a couple different protocols. It supports AMQP and MQTT and HTTP, although typically devices don't use HTTP. Um, and so then, so what it is a matter of is, uh, you know, writing the, the device code there to connect with one of those protocols. And then, you know, on top of those protocols, we've got um, different serialization mechanisms for sending telemetry or events and for uh, synchronizing state with the cloud and, and responding to commands from the cloud. So those three things. Does that answer your question, or maybe you were asking me something slightly different? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess that's kind of the outline of, of the steps that we should then have a have have a look at. Um, yeah, I, sorry, it takes me a while to reply because I'm also writing the notes at the same time. Oh, oh no, that's <laughs> fine. I, I just <laughs> wanted to make sure I was. Uh, yep. I mean, it, that yeah, and, and we could dig into the details there um, for sure. Maybe that's something to do offline. Yeah, so one, well, one thing we, we probably have to set up is, is some form of experimental environment where we actually can do this thing. I'm, I'm not sure that <clears throat> a lot of the people who work on these uh, converters would know how to get something into Asia. Mm -hmm. So that, that's certainly one hurdle we have to uh, take to, to get such a challenge realized. I can certainly help with the getting stuff into Azure uh, part of it. So then, may, so maybe setting up some kind of shared, you know, I don't know we just even just set up a shared repo or something and jointly do some work there to to actually get some examples going. 
that, that would be great. So we, we, we need to do some work on the model level, but we also need to do some work on the instance level. So at, at the end, we need to have that actual Ipso thing and, and the, the digital twin over there in Asia land and um, all that. So th there is uh, probably some, some configuration and setup work we have to get out of the way so we can actually do the, the part that we are more interested in, which is the, the uh, modeling uh, work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm saying this because next week is, is another um, hackathon. I'm not sure that we can set up anything for, for that. Uh, but we will have uh, further uh, hackathons, and it, it would be nice to to have one one event at such a hackathon where we specifically look at getting the the DTDL models live in some form. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. I'm not sure I can participate in a hackathon next week, but I think if we, you know, just just did some cont kind of continuous work offline, I could certainly contribute, you know, over a period of time to something. Great. So the offline part, you know, and and work through this conversion tool chain and maybe some of that stuff. Um, sometimes we just work on tools and don't have any online system. Yeah, clearly we want to have the tools, uh, the, the conversion tools ready before we embark on, on plugging everything together. Uh, so that, that's another reason why we can't do this next week. Um, but um, uh, I think uh, having such an objective uh, and and um, I don't know how, how timing works in the US. So you have Thanksgiving and uh, then essentially you already are, are in, in the holidays. Um, but may maybe getting something done in December uh, might be worth a try. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, so the next step would probably be to to write up the 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 actual challenge that that I introduced so wishy washy here in a little bit more detail so we know what, what we are trying to do here. Mm -hmm. So we may be able to do this in the next three weeks or so. Okay, good. So it sounds like we have a good, good way forward here. And now looking at the clock, I wouldn't realize we're already running over time. Um, but, but thank you, everyone. It was very, very good discussions, and I think we have a good, good progress here on on on, on the interwork aspects. And um, and yeah, and, and Brian, like, if you can come back to the uh, about the publishing the models uh, topic, then we could, you know, put those mo model models somewhere. Everyone else can also have a closer look. I think that would be great. And um, we we'll definitely have a closer look at the the hackathon topic and um, building more stuff here together. Okay, any, any more final closing remarks um, from anyone before we close for today? Okay, so in that case, uh, thanks a lot for everyone joining today. Uh, let us take some planning offline and, and, and come back to this topic um, rather soon, I hope, together again. Okay, thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank and you. Thank you. Bye.